So today we're checking out the newest display from LG. It's part of the OLED Evo lineup, which is their latest generation of OLED products. What's special about today's unit, the OLED G1. And it adds features that are typically reserved for gaming monitors, except on a much larger format display. So I think this unit is gonna be popular for those that like to watch content, but also play games. Inside of this display, you have NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync. You also have 120 FPS, 4K, you have low input lag and a one millisecond response time. Gaming plus OLED. What? <laughs> what? 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 It sounds like a recipe for one heck of a time. Look at the pop! Look at the OLED! All right, so to be honest, I look at the C1 model in the past, uh, fairly recently. So I know what this display looks like. I know that it looks good. I know we're talking OLED next generation, but what's special about this one, like I said, is the gaming element. So we got all kinds of stuff set up to take advantage of that. It's a full like flight simulator scenario going on here. I never even expected it. Never thought I'd see the day. So we have a couple of titles to take advantage of it. But first I wanna showcase the profile of this particular display. I mean, it is crazy slim as you can see here. I am seeing four HDMIs and optical audio, three USB imports. That's plenty of versatility. The key factor with those HDMI ports is that they're HDMI 2.1, so capable of those high uh, frame rates that you're looking for, particularly getting back to the gaming thing, uh, up to 4K 120. Look how tight that is. Get it right, get it tight. When it's pushed all the way in, I don't have my phone. Bose phone, straight from the Bose zone. This is a thin phone as well. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. You can see the phone comparison, thin phone, in display comparison. As far as like off the wall, maybe it's like two phones off the wall. The remotes. So I have seen this new remote, very comfy. Uh, they have revitalized it. You now have more dedicated keys for things like Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus is on there. We have voice through Google Assistant and there's a dedicated button for LG channels. If we just head home, we have, as you can see, this cursor input still tracks around the display, app list, dashboard. Search unbox therapy on YouTube. I look up unbox therapy on YouTube.
Bingo! Yay! So yeah, so voice, it's what you want. You got this like scroll wheel in the middle. Uh, everything you need. NFC is on there too. Pairing purposes. Why don't we just, let's just real quick launch a video. Oh, this is pretty exciting right now. We've got uh, this concept phone. Loud right audio. <laughs> Loud audio. It has some crazy Loud wild audio. Feature. What a spot to be in. Look at the black. For the dark shot. Somehow they do it. I don't know how they do it. It's like a, you got this crazy slim profile and yet they somehow pack volume in there. I'll play, I'll actually play some music right now. It's up to you. Like, it's loud. You could get away with just having this for audio. You could add external speakers if you want, but the main thing is like, you still have enough sound if you want the slimmest profile possible. Just the TV, just the wall. You got volume. Loud audio. Game optimization. All right, so you know the benefits. You know how beautiful OLED happens to be. You know about the deep, the deep black and the rich colors associated with it. I mean, it's not even really up for discussion at this point. It's pretty well established. I've been talking about it for, well, since it's existed as a technology, you probably already look at it in your smartphone and you're probably missing out on your display as far as your big, large format where it really pays off and you might notice it even more so. But the differentiation with this new OLED G1 is the gaming aspect and the game optimizer and the game specific settings. Now this could be whatever source you want to supply to the HDMI. So it could be a gaming PC like we have hooked up over here. It could be a next gen gaming console. It's up to you how you like to play. And then all of a sudden, when you hop into your settings, you'll see the game optimizer becomes available. And this is where things get spicy. As you'll see, we have our game genre selection. It's currently set to standard mode. We have our VRR and G-Sync. NVIDIA G-Sync is currently turned on. NVIDIA system down there. If I click on game genre, I can switch this from standard to first person shooter, role playing game or real time strategy. There's a couple of other features which they have put into the game optimizer. Black stabilizer, which adjusts visibility to have better quality of dark scenes in the game and there's a white stabilizer there as well oled motion pro reduction in blue light and this is cool look at this input delay otherwise known as input lag man i remember in the old days having to look far and wide for displays that had low input lag that were good for gaming of course times have changed here we have our standard setting, which is gonna reduce input delay. This is of course the uh, amount of time it takes for an input on a controller to register on the display. And if you have a lag, particularly in like a competitive style a game, it can be very problematic. So the standard mode is already doing some degree of optimization. The boost attempting to match the frame rate of the game console, but you have multiple settings there, depending how crazy you want to get with it, but it's already got decent input lag out the box in the standard setting. Oh, so game optimizer acts like a picture setting. So once I click on it, all my presets for what I like to have set up for gaming will just toggle alongside the main game optimizer setting. So then when I go back to some other source, I may have that, for example, on uh, Vivid or have more processing in there because the key here with a game optimizer is to limit some of that post-processing in order to deliver that speed that you're looking for. Hence the G portion of the G1. Uh, look at this incredible setup we have here. I mean, I have, I mean, I've always wanted to do something along these lines right here. This is incredible. I mean, they sent us this stuff to goof around with Flight Simulator, though I feel like I need Willie Do at this point because he knows about this stuff. Where's Will? Will. Will, thank you for joining. Uh, since you are our resident pilot, flight simulator expert, we're just looking for a quick rundown on some of the equipment we have over here. Well, that's the yoke. 
that's pretty much what I know. That's the important part? Okay, cool. Jesus. Where's the airport? Holy. <laughs> There's nothing relaxing about me doing this. I'm trying to, the airport's further over there. Oh, there it is. I see it. Yo, am I gonna hit the water right now? Oh god. Oh god! <laughs> oh my god. Critical damage to the aircraft. I feel like I can pull this off though. Oh god, don't go down there. Yo, how did I do way better on the first? I did not expect. Oh, I'm still driving. Oh, that's fine. No, 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 I'm fine with that. I gave like once I hit and landed, I was like, cool. I, I guess I went to the wrong runway. I went to the left instead of straight. But man, it's stressful flying a plane. Jeez, quite an immersive experience. Now, the reason we have Flight Simulator on here is because this might be the example an example of a type of game that you want to play, which can really utilize a large scale display for immersion. Uh, you see often people will do like a multi-monitor setup around themselves for that to feel like you're really looking out of a plane, but those can be messy, some of those setups. If you just get a really large display and it's not lacking the gaming features you're looking for and you sit the right distance to it, it can kind of mimic that same type of immersion so that's pretty cool all right so we just got done with flight simulator as you saw and that game super resource intensive with the graphics amped up and we're running off of a 3070 right now so you saw frame rates dip below 30 but that's because of the gaming pc not because of the capabilities of the display and so now we're in squadrons oh god Get it together. And you can see we are utilizing that higher frame rate capability over HDMI 2.1 on the display. Wow. All right, made that. So it's not just low input lag, it's also high frame rate performance. So if you look in the corner there, depending on how much detail is around me at any given point, you can see it fluctuate, but it's certainly over the 60 you might be used to on previous generation TVs. This sort of showcases the ability to go above that. Whoa! So it's OLED, it's low input lag, it's one millisecond response, and it's 4K 120. Holy cow. The learning curve on this one too. So there it is, it's the LG OLED G1 OLED, but for gaming and all the other stuff too, but gaming as well.